Ken, let's go back in time for a second here, though. Uh, <laughs> the Yankees right now, they're not doing too much with what's going on in the world today. But we could talk about the past. And America's pastime is chock full of great baseball players at every position. And we just want to pick your brain about your era and who you think. Now, look, you were a great hitter of that era as well. But I, if I know you, you're not going to bring up yourself. I will, though. You were, <laughs> You were a great hitter, but what about the best hitters of your era? Where do you start that list? You know, I, I, I went back and I looked to see some of the names. And, of course, there's a lot of Hall of Famers from that, from that era that uh, have been since gone into the Hall of Fame. But I broke down the hitters in, in different categories, if you will. Okay. Okay, I, I went with the power intimidators, you know, the guys who are really the power hitters. This is my first group. Okay. And, of course, I put Reggie's name in there right at the top. I think Reggie, of course, everybody knew that uh, you were going to get a lot of home runs, you are going to get a lot of strikeouts, but every time he came up to the plate, it was exciting. Now, there were other hitters that fit into that category as well, and uh, most of these guys are in the Hall of Fame. Not all of them are, but these are some of the guys I thought of. You know, Willie McCovey, you know, uh, he was around when I first came up to the big leagues, and he was a guy that I watched while I was in the minors and when I was a kid. And when I first saw him on the field, he was very intimidating. Uh, the first time I played against him, I believe it was at Shea Stadium, and uh, he had a bad knee. So he came out and took like six swings in batting practice. He didn't take infield practice. and hit like four of them out of the park, went back into the clubhouse, hit two during the game, got pinch run for late in the ball game, and, uh, you know, he was on his way to a Hall of Fame career. Uh, Willie Stargent falls into that category. Absolutely. Longest home runs ever hit. Uh, in those days, in those cookie-cutter stadiums like Three Rivers and uh, Veterans Stadium in Philadelphia, they always had sort of like a star up in the upper deck where Stargell would hit a ball. Mm -hmm. Look up there and you say to yourself, how could anybody hit a ball that far? But uh, <laughs> he, he did do it. Uh, Dave Kingman, of course. Yes. Not, not as accomplished a hitter as these guys because he struck out a lot. But uh, he, hit, he hit him a long way, too. That's in vogue now, Kenny. He, he could yes, be in place. <laughs> you're exactly right. You know, <laughs> exactly right. Bob Robertson, I don't know if you remember him with Pittsburgh. I he, don't. A teammate of Stargell's. And, uh, you know, Al Oliver, guys like that. He could hit him a long way. Uh, Mike Schmidt, Greg Lazinski. Michael Jack Schmidt, yep. Uh, yeah, great power hitter, Hall of Famer. Lazinski could hit him as far as anybody. Um, and then I, I went to another category. I, I would say the more all-around hitters. Okay. Hit for power and also hit for average. Can I, can I guess who's at the top of your list? Go right ahead. Rod Carew. No, he's down a little further. He's okay. another category for me. All right. This, these guys had power, and they also could hit for average. I'm sorry I rushed a bit. By all means, go ahead. You're one, you're one step ahead of me, but he's on the <laughs> list. Uh, Willie Mays. There you go. Uh, George Brett, uh, Cal Ripken, Eddie Murray, Roberto Clemente, Joe Morgan, Winfield, Dave Winfield, Ricky Henderson, Carl Yastrzemski, Jim Rice. Um, all of those guys are in the Hall of Fame. And uh, all of them, I would say, not only could hit for power, but they could hit for batting average. Uh, you know, you saw uh, Dave Winfield almost won a title from uh, Don Mattingly years ago. Absolutely. George George Brett hit nearly 400 one year, and still he could hit home runs. He could hit close to 30 home runs. Uh, Willie Mays, to me, was the all-time greatest player. He did everything on the field. So I, he, I would almost put him in a different category as the, the world's best living baseball player. <laughs> <laughs> uh, less power, but these are the guys, to me, who were a batting title waiting to happen. And you, I, you mentioned Rod Carew. I think he won seven titles. So and, unbelievable. Yeah, he hit uh, 388 one year. Uh, I think I told you I finished third that year in the league, and I was 60 points behind him. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, and you know, won. off the off the top of my head, Kenny, yeah. I could think of two songs immediately where they mention him. The Beastie Boys had one because I got <laughs> mad hits like I was Rod Carew and Adam Sandler <laughs> in his Hanukkah song. He had yeah, him in there too. So I mean, come I on. Did. <laughs> Rod, Rod Carew was a, a – I played against him in the Bronx League. He was born in Panama, but he grew up in the Bronx. Right. And I played against him in the Bronx Federation League. He was a couple years older than me, 
And one thing I remembered about this guy, I said, man, this skinny kid could really hit. And, and, and number two, the next thing I knew, he's playing second base for the Minnesota Twins. And, um, you know, a couple of years later, I was in the big league. So we got to play against each other once I got to the American League. Let me ask you one more thing about him, because when, when you have guys like Carew, Kenny, you always uh -huh. hear about sweet swing. Like the, yeah. the ones that come to my mind immediately uh, from, you know, from me watching baseball, Barry Bonds, Ken yeah. Griffey Jr., yeah. just guys, Don Mattingly, before he hurt his back, of course, but they just had that mechanical baseball sweet swing. Did Carew, when you saw him swing the bat, was it just, was it poetry in motion like the guys I just mentioned? Yeah, he was a magician. I mean, he could hit the ball anywhere on the field. He, could, he, he was sort of like the American League version of Tony Gwynn. Uh, Tony Gwynn did it in the National League. But Rodney could also bunt. He would never have like an 0 for 9 or an 0 for he, He'd lay down a bunt and beat it out before that would happen. <laughs> you know, uh, he, uh, he was a great hitter, great hitter. Uh, he played second base. Later on in his career, he moved to first base. And uh, you, you get on first, and all he wanted to do was talk. You know, he'd, he'd talk about the old days. In the really? I, I, I said, Rod, you know, I'm not going to be here long. Eddie Murray's up. <laughs> 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 yeah, you better, you better <laughs> you have to stay really quick. What about Ricky, uh, Ricky Henderson? You know, uh, I had him in the all-around category. Okay. Because, uh, you know, he could hit 300. And he could hit home runs. He hit over 300 homers. And plus, he's the best, greatest base stealer in, uh, of all time. He's an intimidator once he got to first base. And also, he had a high on base percentage. I what? think I had mentioned to you, Chris, that one year he played, the year he played for the Yankees, one of the years, he was injured for the first month of the year and only played in 143 games. He scored 146 runs. <laughs> <laughs> well, just, yeah, unbelievable. Let's, let's be honest. Let's be honest for a second. If, uh -huh. you're, if you're an opposing pitcher, I mean, this is a guy, you know, leadoff home run after leadoff home run. Yeah. So you have to respect his power. You have to respect his hitting capabilities to all fields. Yeah. But if you, if you walk this guy, Ken, <laughs> it, it could be a triple. You exactly. Now, I read a story about Ricky the other day, and uh, that's one thing I've been doing lately. Uh, uh, I, I finished uh, Nelson DeMille uh, book the other day. You know, I'm always reading baseball stuff. Right. But the story about Ricky, he got on first base and looked across the diamond at the third baseman, and Ricky held up two fingers. And two pitchers later, he was on third base. <laughs> <laughs> let's go back to the future. So let's, okay. let's, let's use the flux capacitor and get back to today's <laughs> day. Um, who do you think could represent those, those same categories that you just went through? Uh, who, who, who's on your list there? You know, uh, you mean players from now? Yes, players from now. Okay. I, I would say – different eras and there's different type of players. The players now are, are almost all power hitters. You know, they're, they're almost right. all power hitters. Strike out home run. <laughs> yeah, well, that's true, but some of these guys are above the others. And uh, my number one guy above all the others is Mike Trout. Absolutely. He, he is he's a wonder to watch. Play. I love watching this guy play baseball. I, I kind of wish he wasn't on the West Coast so, so we could see more of him. Uh, I kind of wish that uh, uh, somehow the Yankees had gotten him. If they had one more one more slot in the draft, they would have gotten him. They were going to yep. pick him, and the Angels took it. Um, I, I just think that not only does he have power, he, has 40, he hit 45 home runs last year. I think that was his career high. He also gets on base. And, you know, there's different ways of quantifying hitters than there were back in the 70s. I, re I can remember, Chris, I led the league in on-base percentage one year when I was playing for Montreal. It wasn't even a negotiating point. It, it didn't matter that I, I got on base 43% of the time. It didn't matter. Uh, you didn't even, we didn't bring it up. And certainly, uh, you know, the, the GM wasn't going to bring it up. But nowadays, if you lead the league at on-base percentage like Mike Trout did last year, I mean, that's, that could be worth a million dollars to you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Christian Yelich. I, I, this, this guy – Unfortunately, the Marlins got rid of him and traded him, and, and he just blossomed in Milwaukee to where he's one of the best players in the game. I love How, watching. I love watching him. Too. Such a great he's hitter. Got beautiful swing. Beautiful swing. Another one of those sweet swings, Kenny. Oh yeah, 
Uh, I don't know if you remember a hitter named Billy Williams from back in the day, a former Cubby. I do, yeah. He's a Hall of Famer. Uh, they used to call him Sweet Swinging Billy Williams. And his, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Yelich's swing kind of reminds me of Billy Williams. Okay. It, it doesn't look like there's much effort there, but there's a lot of power. Don't um, you? I, I can't stand. I, I mean, these guys who make it look so easy. Yeah, well, there's it's the they're, hardest thing to do, and it looks like it's child's play sometimes. But, Chris, these guys are so strong. And that's yeah. the difference between nowadays and then. People didn't work out like 12 months a year like they do now. You know, that, that's, a big, that's a big deal now. I mean, training methods are so much better. Uh, nutrition is so much better. Some of these guys have their personal chefs. chefs what about, but what personal. about you, Kenny? Did, did you, you were a specimen. Did you work out all season or no? I, I kind of relied on being a strong guy to begin with. I didn't work okay. out all year, but once we started getting close to spring training, I would hit the treadmill uh, to keep my legs strong. It wasn't so much about weightlifting in those days and, and, you know, all these type of training methods they have now with the ropes and all that sort of thing. That, that wasn't even around. That wasn't even thought of. Uh, back in my day, a lot of guys used spring training to get into shape. They would come a little heavy. No, that, that wasn't, that's, they don't do that anymore. You, there's too much on the line now as far as uh, how much money you can make. Uh, so guys come to spring training ready to go. That's why uh, in, in our day, it took more time to ramp up to get ready for the exhibition games than they, than they do now. Because the guys are more or less, they're ready to play. All they have to do is get their timing down a little bit and their, their pitchers are, get their throw, get a few reps in in the bullpens, and then they're ready to go and start the exhibition games. We, we have to start to wrap this up. I didn't mean to interrupt your list, but I like having a conversation with you because it's fun. So if you have any other guys, if you could just rattle them off really quick. Ooh, there's a lot of guys nowadays I like to watch. Uh, Rendon, of course, the Yankees, Judge and Stanton. Yes. Uh, specimens. These guys are strong. They're good hitters and they have power. Uh, Devers, Bregman, Arenado, Altuve, Mookie Betts. I love Anthony Rizzo of the Cubs. Uh, Bellinger. Uh, Jose Abreu of the White Sox, Springer, Acuna Jr., uh, Glaber Torres. I think he's going to be super. And John Cole of the Pirates. Uh, these, are, these are all guys that if I couldn't get in free, I would pay to see these guys. Wow. Well, I'll, I'll add a couple. DJ LeMay, he was a machine. And also oh, – yeah. And Michael he's Brantley. On too. He's on my list, too. Michael Brantley. I, I got to add him. Yeah. Because Good I hit. love – He's a tactician, Kenny. I just love watching his at bats because you could see the wheels turning uh -huh. as he's in the box. It's, it's his father was a major league hitting coach, so he, you know he's been tutored his whole life. There you go. And and one more thing, I just have to say this. I've I've seen those Yankees classics. I remember a little bit when you played, and if I was on the hill, it would be a lot of nibbling <laughs> on the outside corner and just see if you if you could <laughs> offer something. <laughs> Chris, you couldn't nibble too much because Eddie Murray was up next. You know that's he, true. Yeah. That's true. I'm yeah. done. I, you know what? I throw my two seamer to him, and and he can hit <laughs> that in the park. I'm not facing you though. Uh, that's that's gonna do it for here. One, uh, in case you missed this or any of these interviews, look out for the Yes We're Here show on the Yes Network. Check yesnetwork.com for a complete schedule. Mr. Singleton, it is always a pleasure to talk ball with you. It's just so easy, and the conversations, as you said <laughs> earlier, they're just great. Thank you, sir. Chris, sit right back at you, buddy.